Good morning, everybody. This is the day that the Lord hath made and we will rejoice and we will be exceedingly glad in it because God is good and he is worthy to be praised. Good morning. And uh, we are about to set our day. And um, those of you who had an opportunity to hear that teaching on um, uh, this past Wednesday, we talked about uh, the benefit of staying calm. And I want to kind of pick up with that and go over some things with you that I think will really be a blessing to you today. So, uh, yeah, we've been uh, continuing to deal with the path and we have been dealing with um, the journey. And, and that's how we see our lives and should see our lives as Christian people. Uh, that we're dealing with the path and we're dealing with the journey. So it's going to be an amazing time today. And I'm glad to have you guys here. Let's take about four minutes and uh, send the blessings out to some of you guys this morning. Praise the Lord. And so we uh, we send the blessing of God out to those of you uh, in New Jersey this morning. Uh, shalom to you guys. Uh, South Bend, Indiana. And um, Oregon, Honolulu, Hawaii, Waikiki is with us this morning. And uh, we send blessings to those of you in Plant City, Florida, McDonough, Georgia, Compton, California, Philadelphia, Manila, Philippines, Stockton, California, Queens, New York. We send blessings to you guys. The International City, College Park, Georgia, Georgia send blessings to all of you, my folk in College Park, Georgia. And uh, I tell people everywhere I go, I say, I'm, I'm college Paul. They're like, well, I'm like, yeah, you know, Nantucket is in the house this morning with constant. We send blessings to those of you in Canada today. And we announce that you are blessed. And uh, Roseville, Toledo, Ohio is here. Um, Miami, Florida. We're going to be there next Friday. Think of that. Next Friday, Kenya in Africa is in the house this morning loganville milwaukee uh virginia uh bessemer alabama uh nigeria is here with us today and we send blessings to all of you guys and we say you're blessed in your home blessed in your city your state your nation chile is in the house with us this morning and um uh south carolina fountain inn i believe that was is here today Louisiana is here today, Boise, Idaho. Uh, shalom, shalom, and we are blessed. The United Kingdom across the pond is here, and we are thanking God for you, sending blessings to you guys in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We say all is well. Harlem, New York is here. New Orleans is here. And uh, yeah, man, I mean, it is uh, uh, Saudi Arabia is in the house this morning. Uh, it is everything that God wants to do with you. Australia is in the house this morning. And we just think that God's going to, you know, bless those. And we believe in the blessing. We welcome those of you from India. Uh, and uh, uh, Accra, Ghana uh, is in the house this morning. We thank God for you guys. Um, uh, and I thank God for our, our fam in, in, uh, in uh, Uganda. Seattle, Washington is here we send blessings to you guys in seattle washington and uh yeah man i just think that god is doing some amazing things in your life macon georgia is in the house louisville kentucky um there's uganda again and our fam in uganda we send blessings to you guys you are blessed san diego atlanta uh union city all my folk here in the house um and we declare that you are blessed amen you are absolutely blessed um so we're gonna get psalms 91 equipped and uh after that i'm gonna share some things with you and continue to share some things with you on on, on being calm and uh, just continue to pursue that um regardless just you know let that be a place where let that be a landing spot 
You know, it's it's important. Let it be a landing spot uh, in your life. And so all is well. Repeat after me. I dwell in the shelter of the most high God. I find rest in the shadow of the almighty. God is my refuge and my fortress. You are my God in whom I trust and with great confidence in whom I will rely. God will rescue me from every trap and protect me from every disease. I am covered and protected by his outstretched arms. God's faithful promises are my armor and my protection. I will not be afraid of the terrors of the night, nor of the arrows that fly in the day. I will not dread any disease that stalks in the darkness, nor any disaster that strikes at midday. Because God is my refuge and the almighty God of my home, no evil can befall me. No plague can come near my dwelling. God has ordered his angels to guard, defend, and protect me in my house. God's armies of heaven will keep me from falling. I will walk unharmed and kick anything that is evil from my path. Because of God's love for me, I will call upon him. He will set me above all my troubles. He will deliver me from all my fears. And he will honor me with his presence and power. He will reward me with long life. And he will show me his salvation. I declare that I am Psalms 91 equipped. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. And amen. All righty, folks. Let's get into this. Get your notes out and pen and write some of this stuff down. Um, I, I, I was like, man, I, I taught a teaching on Wednesday night on the benefit of, of the calm disposition of life and it um it's it's pretty important and so i guess the first thing i want to start off with is that calmness is the way we show that we trust god calmness is the way that we show that we trust god and somebody says well why is this important because our emotions can and they will fight to control your life, um, feelings of brokenness, feelings of hurt, feelings of anger, feelings of fear, all of those things try to disrupt and rob you of what I call a spirit of ease. And it's something that we should contend for and that we should fight for every day of our lives. I'm not saying that you won't ever get angry. I won't, I'm not saying that you won't ever, you know, walk in fear over certain things. What I'm saying is like a rubber band, you can stretch it out. And when you release it, it returns back to its original position. I believe that calmness should be the original position for a Christian. It, it, it should be the set place for our lives. And yeah, no matter what happens, it, you should always be able to snap back to that position of calmness. Uh, I just did not recognize how important that position was, both for your physical health and your emotional health. There's a lot of things that can be granted to the life that will allow his snap back position to be a position of calmness. Did you hear what I just said? A snap back position should be that position of calmness. And so, you know, I don't ever want anybody to think that we're talking about, you know, you're a bad person if you can't maintain this. And as soon as you are stretched a little bit, then, you know, you're, you're, you're going to hell. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying 
as you recognize the importance of certain things and as you recognize certainly the importance of being calm um it should be a snap back position a snap back position in your life and so um yeah it, it's something that uh I, I really like that phrase uh calmness you might want to write this down I, i'm gonna i'm gonna write it down calmness uh, yeah i'm thinking about a rubber band calmness should be a snap back position for the christian and even though you might be stretched from calmness or challenged or an emotional thing may come up you can always go snap back to that position of calmness and 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 what happens you, you benefit from it in the world and and i'm talking about right now it's chaotic it's stressful and it's easy to become anxious and overwhelmed or even angry okay but as Christians, we're called to live in peace, in joy, trusting in God and depending on God. And so this calm disposition to me, you know, I've had it on my mind since we talked about it on Wednesday night. This calm disposition to me is is a power position. Now, remember, power is the ability to get the job done. It's, it's the ability to get results. And so some of the things I talked to you about, I want you to just, you know, realize it as I as I talk to you about this today. Calmness promotes clarity of mind. You, you can't think the way you need to think about certain things when you're out of the calm disposition, when you're stressed and when you're frustrated and when your mind is so occupied with things it robs from you clarity of mind and so it 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 becomes very very important for for you to to um get to a position where you can be in a situation where you know how to snap back from certain things uh turn it off um uh, so this is uh this is pretty powerful this is pretty pretty powerful i'm i'm working on something i know my my uh instagram for some reason has a poor connection but it's reconnecting right now i want to wait till those guys get back connected with us you know they've been having storms everywhere and and some of the connection has been really crazy for some reason so uh anyway we'll go on and 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 pick up and do what we need to do there but um let's look at something else calmness strengthens relationships calmness strengthens relationship okay there we go all right we're back sorry guys uh oh there's a <laughs> um calmness strengthens relationships Okay. I want to show you something here too. Um when uh where's my Bible at? Let me let me show you something here. This is pretty good good scripture. Uh in James chapter one. Uh let's see. Let's go to verse 19 and 20. James chapter 1, verse 19 and 20. And this will help you out. All righty. Okay. James chapter. Chapter one. All right. Now look at verse 19. I'm going to read it in the Amplified Bible. He says, understand this, my beloved brethren, let every man be quick to hear slow to speak, slow to take offense, and slow to get angry. Quick to hear, slow to take offense. And, uh, you know, when you begin to, to do those kind of things, 
you're you're actually going to be going to benefit some things where your life is concerned. And so um, this is pretty important. This is strengthening relationships when you can say, I'm going to be slow to speak. You know, sometimes people just they just run their mouth. <laughs> you know, I'm going to be slow to speak. I'm going to be quick to hear. And when you're slow to speak and quick to hear, then I just believe that, you know, that relationship is really going to benefit, um, benefit you big time, slow to speak, uh, quick to hear. And uh, yeah, you're going to find yourself walking in a better relationship, slow to anger, all of those things, calmness produces. And then as a result of it, it's a better relationship. All right. We've got Instagram, I think, back online. All right. Calmness fosters creativity and productivity. Do you know when the enemy can affect your um, position where you're you're no longer calm anymore? Do you know that um, it will it, it will affect some things in your life when you're no longer calm anymore? You're create you're not going to be creative if you're not calm. I mean, if you're all over the place, you're just not going to be creative like you should. You're not going to be productive like you should, like you should, because you're not calm. So what is the enemy going to do? He's going to do everything to try to disrupt your calmness. Everything he possibly can to try to disrupt your calmness. If he can get you to be angry and stay angry, your your creativity is going to be affected. If he can get you to 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 be stressed and stay stressed your creativity and productivity is going to be messed up so I, i'm really looking at this giving it a second look that when calmness is under attack the enemy is trying to disrupt some things in your life disrupt clarity of mind disrupt relationship disrupt creativity i mean you go in and try to write a song and you 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 mad or you're stressed it, it's just not it's just not going to flow it's just not going to flow and so uh it is important for us to pursue being calm to snap back to really respect the position of being calm. So maybe you're thinking, man, what's going on with my creativity? Uh, oh, wow, what's going on with my productivity? I'm just not as productive as I was. Check out what's going on there. Have you allowed a circumstance or a situation to distract you? You know, I, I was very interested one day to just really nail what it means to be distracted. And distraction is an intrusion, an intrusion of your mind to cause confusion. Uh, an intrusion of your mind to cause confusion. Now, has the enemy intruded in your mind with negative thoughts, you know, fearful thoughts? Um, he's trying to cause confusion. He's trying to bring you out of the calm position into a position of being frantic or into a position where you're being panic. You know, panic is groundless fear. You know, some people are afraid of something and there's nothing to be afraid of. It's like you're afraid of something that hadn't even happened yet. And when that fear comes in, based on something that hadn't even happened, you just thought about it or you're thinking about it, that's called panic. And the enemy has disrupted your position of calmness. And so all of a sudden in my life, this is becoming a big, big deal. OK, remember what I just said? I believe that spoke to some of you. Panic is groundless fear. You're afraid of something that hadn't even happened yet. And you just got to stay calm, you know, just just chill. <laughs> Take a chill pill. You're going to be just fine. You know, calmness enables effective communication. If you're not calm, you probably can't communicate that well. <laughs> I mean, you're you're 
if you're out of the place of calmness and into the place of stress or into the place of anger or into the place of being overwhelmed or into the place of just anxious, you, you, you don't you don't communicate well. You say things you don't mean. You use words that you don't you know, understand why you're using them. And uh, you can't find words when you when you're trying to find words to to kind of explain yourself. So it's it's important that we we understand that calmness reduces physical and emotional stress. That's why it's so important to snap back to calmness. It reduces that emotional stress. It 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 reduces that um, physical stress. Um, yeah, and you guys know exactly what I'm saying. And and I guess one of the reasons I'm led to talk about this is because it's Mother's Day. We should celebrate our mothers big time. Uh, and it should be a, like a, an amazing day for mothers, but it's not true with every mother. I mean, some mothers, this is, this is so stressful. It's, it's, it's so painful. And I say to you, enter into that place of calmness so that God can bring the joy that you should be walking into your life. And, uh, yeah, we pray for you, you know, uh, I hope that somebody's getting something out of it. Some, some of you are saying this, you're, you're, you're getting things out of this, but to, you know, sometimes I take things that are going on with me. It may not be that true with everybody else, but dude, I know what it feels like to be stressful. I know what it feels like to be overwhelmed and I know what it feels like to be angry and anxious. And now that I've put some attention on calmness, the snap back position of the Christian, that's a t-shirt, man. Snap back to calmness. Uh, I'm really seeing how I can defeat panic and worry and fear and anxiety just by pursuing calmness, right? Uh, it demonstrates trust in God's goodness, not just, you know, that I trust God, but also I can, I can calm down and say, it'll be all right. I trust God's goodness. It'll be fine. It, it, it'll be all right. This weekend, I'm good. You know, you, I'm a mother and, you know, I know I could feel some kind of way, but uh, take a deep breath. I'm just going to be calm and and um, I'm just going to trust in God's goodness and and it's going to be good. Sometimes we let one day of a holiday mess up everything. Just one day. Don't don't do that. Uh, yeah, I like what you said. Calmness and God's confidence. They go hand in hand. Uh, when I have confidence in God, you know, we talk about depending on God, but when I have confidence in God then calmness and confidence will go hand in hand. And even when you look at things like humility and gentleness, you know, I want to be a gentleman. And I want to know what it, it's like to be a gentleman. I don't want to be some toxic uh, illustration of manhood. I want to be a gentleman um, in, in every aspect. And it's, it's going to really require the snap back position of the Christian. I, I love that. And that's calmness. Calmness cultivates humility. It cultivates gentleness. Um, yeah. So it, it, to me, it's like, uh, you know how you kind of know stuff, but you hadn't been able to articulate it or put it in words. I think that's what's happening this morning uh, to be able to articulate calmness what it means and what it does um it just means a lot and as you enter into this weekend you're going to enter this weekend with this on your mind the snap back position of a christian calmness calmness a, the snap back position of, of of a christian uh it also promotes forgiveness and reconciliation you know it's amazing, man, when you're when you're like fired up about something and you're just feeling some kind of way and you just really geeked out over something. And, you know, you want to cuss somebody out, you want to give them a piece of your mind and all that kind of stuff. For, forgiveness is like the probably one of the furthest things from your mind. Reconciliation is one of the furthest things from your mind because it, it, it takes that position of calmness to promote forgiveness. And it and to promote reconciliation and yeah, man, I I I I don't 
you know, life is too short to be walking around holding all against somebody and just, you know, just instead of being just be calm and say, you know what, God, I just I forgive them and I reconcile and you just kind of go on. But now if you start rehearsing the offense and nursing the offense instead of dispersing the offense. Oh, wow. That's going to stretch that rubber band out there, boy. And it's 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 going to get way out there. And so we we don't want to do that. Calmness promotes forgiveness and reconciliation. It also inspires. Now that's that's something. Calmness will inspire thanksgiving and contentment. I become thankful when I'm calm. You know, sometimes you have to just look around you and be thankful for the things that are around you. And just look at what you have and you, you calm down. You can be like, you know what? Um, at least I got, at least it's better than it was yesterday. Y you know what? At least I got something to eat. You know what? At least I got a card for Mother's Day. Somebody said, Pastor, I ain't even get a card. I can't stand them jokers. I ain't even get a card. Ain't nobody called me. Ain't nobody did. Dude, you better, you better get in that snapback position. Because this thing ain't going too good right now. If it's Friday... And that's what your attitude is. And you just you just bracing yourself to, you know, for strife and bracing yourself for, you know, that kind of stuff. It ain't going to be too good on Sunday, boy. You just got to make your mind. I'm just going to stay calm. And if somebody comes up to me and say, happy Mother's Day, I just received that. Don't let these holidays rob you of calmness and uh, just be thankful. All right. And then I got a little bit more time, two minutes here. Calmness serves as a witness to unbelievers. Um, it really does. I mean, every time I've ever exploded and somebody was there to see that, it was so embarrassing. I felt so bad. I felt, I just, just felt awful. And because that's, that's really not what I want to put out as an illustration or an example. Um, but, you know. It is true. You live and you learn and then you you want to do better. OK, you want to do better and um, you can't do better until you know better. Amen. Uh, but now we know better. So now we can begin to uh, get on this journey towards calmness and to make that a part of our life and a part of what we're doing. So anyway, I hope that I hope that helped you today. I hope it blessed you, gave you something to think about over the over the weekend and um i say grace grace to you grace grace to to uh any mountain that faces you any challenge that faces you grace grace to those things and i i choose to be calm and i choose to be gracious and you know you you, you do it intentionally you do it on purpose you're not waiting for something to hit you in the head before you do those things so yeah baby yeah um so you set your you set your mind and you set your heart for this weekend and uh be a blessing to somebody don't sit there in self-pity you know self-pity is a big big time enemy don't sit in self-pity and uh everything's gonna be all right yeah all right listen uh, a couple announcements um if you're in the atlanta area we're gonna have a men's fellowship tomorrow and uh, I'm going to continue instructing men on um, real manhood and then really try to help them to pursue opportunities to grow in their manhood. And they're going to be shocked because everything about your manhood growth is going to start at the church that you're a part of. And so, uh, yeah, so I'm looking forward to that um tomorrow 11 o'clock on our campus another men's fellowship praise god and then uh next friday in fact this time next friday i'll be in miami um uh, may the 19th and it's going to be pretty amazing may the 19th in miami florida uh you do not want to miss that join me there it's going to be pretty awesome 
uh, May 19th, and then uh, we'll end up the Change Experience Tour in Charlotte, North Carolina, uh, Friday, June the 9th. So if you're in the North Carolina area or you want to drive up from South Carolina or wherever, join us in Charlotte. And then here's the big one. We're going to be having our homecoming Grace Life uh, Convention. It's going to be Thursday, July the 13th through Saturday, July the 15th. We got some amazing guests that are going to be there. And if you haven't registered yet, please don't, please, please don't wait till the last minute. Please don't. I sound like Jane Brown. Please, 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 please don't wait till the last minute. Go ahead and register today. That's the Grace Life Conference, July 13th through the 15th. Well, hey, guys, love you so much. You're going to have an amazing day today. And uh, yeah, hook up with some family, your brothers or sisters, your grandkids, husbands or wife. Make your mind up. I'm going to have a good day today. I'm going to have a good day this weekend. God has given me life and I am going to live it. Well, we love you so much. I'll see you from the pulpit on this Sunday. And uh, we're going to have a good, good time. God bless y'all. Uh, apologize for the technical difficulties. Those of you over uh, on uh, the other feed, you know, uh, we just thank God that um, it came back. Those of you on Instagram. And uh, other than that, I'm getting ready to have me a good weekend. Praise God. And you guys are too. God bless you. I'll see you on Sunday.